start with pairs of angles. We will learn about five different pairs of angles, um, and each of their relationships tells us something different about their measures. So the first one we're going to learn about are adjacent angles. So when we hear the word adjacent, I want us to think of the word next to. So to be the adjacent door would be next door. So, for example, if we have Mr. Duck here, and we have a chicken, notice how far apart they are. They are not adjacent until they are side by side. So once the chicken moves over, now we could call them adjacent because they're side by side. So technically speaking, when we have adjacent angles, we have two angles that are in the same plane. We say they have a common vertex. Notice both angles are sharing this vertex. And they have a common side. So they have one ray that's a part of both angles. And they don't have any common interior points, meaning they don't overlap. Okay, the next one we're going to learn is a linear pair. Notice the words in that, linear, um, she says that they create a line, and they're a pair, so there are two angles that create a line. So in their technical terms, they are adjacent angles, meaning they are next to each other, sharing a vertex and a side, and they're non-common sides, so the ones that they don't share, are opposite rays. Remember we learned about opposite rays that they create a line. So we would say that angles 3 and 4 are a linear pair. All right, let's look at some examples. It says, tell whether the angles are only adjacent, adjacent and form a linear pair, or are not adjacent. So first thing you're going to say, are these next to each other? Just by looking at the letters, we could say, do they share a vertex? Yes. They both have E in the middle. So in the picture, we have angle A, E, B, and B, E, D. So if you looked at that, did I trace an angle, did I tra trace a ray twice? I trace this angle and this angle. So if you notice, I drew on EB twice. So they are sharing a side and have no common endpoints. So they are adjacent. N now we want to decide if their non-shared sides are opposite rays. So they both start at E. EA goes straight to the left. ED goes straight to the right. So they are opposite rays. So we would say yes, they are adjacent and form a linear pair. Here's another example, AEB and BEC. So first we want to decide, are they adjacent? Do they share a side? Notice in their letters, they both have EB. On this one, we have EB. So they're both using this ray. They don't share any interior points, so they are adjacent. Do they form a linear pair? AE goes to the left. And EC goes up to the, to the right. So it doesn't go opposite each other. So are adjacent, but not a linear pair, only adjacent. Here's a little more of a challenging example. Um, we're still asking the same question, but we're given more angles in the picture. So this time they're labeling our angles with the, the number written inside the angle. So we wanted to say our angle 5 and 6 adjacent and form a linear pair or not adjacent. So we see that 5 and 6 both use PU, so they are adjacent. Their opposite or their non shared sides are opposite rays, so they are adjacent and form a linear pair. All right, now we're going to look at 7, which is this one here, as well as SPU. So we have this angle and then the whole angle. We're first going to say, are they adjacent? So we would say, yes, these do have a common vertex and a common side. And are they sharing any interior points? Notice that all of the points inside 7 are also in 5. So they're sharing interior points, so they are not adjacent. You could say they're overlapping. So we would say not adjacent. One more. <clears throat> 7 and 8. These two angles don't even share a side. When I trace them, I never trace the same ray twice. So we would call these not adjacent. They have a common vertex, but they share no common sides. Now we're going to look at some other types of angle pairs. The first set, well, both of these you've heard before in previous years. The first set is complementary. Anytime two angles 
have a sum of 90 degrees or their two angle measures add up to 90 degrees, we consider those complementary. So if we look at the three angles we're given, A, B, and C, the only two whose measures add up to 90 are A and B. So 53 plus 37 would give us 90. So we would say that A and B are complementary. We also have what is called supplementary. Supplementary means that their angles add up to 180. So in our, our three angles here, the two that are 180 degrees, if I add A, 53, to C, 127, I would get 180. So A and C are what we call supplementary. All right, so now um, when we work with different types of problems, we want to find ways to find their complement, so an angle that's added to another angle to get 90, or their supplement, an angle that's added to another angle that gives us 90. So different ways we're going to do that with our complement. If the angle we know is 90, we're going to say to find the other one, we're going to say 90 minus that angle, or minus x. When I look for the supplement, if that angle I do know is x, I'm going to say 180 minus the angle I know, x. So let's try some. So first thing we're going to do for A, we're going to find the complement of angle F. So we want to know what do I add to 39 to get, or to 59 to get 90. So if I start with the way we find our complement, 90 minus the angle I know, well the angle I know in this one is 59. So I'm going to say 90 minus 59 says that the complement of 59 degrees would be 31. Now if we want to find the supplement of G, this one's different because we have variables, but we want to follow the same process. So to find the supplement, we're going to say 180 minus the angle I know. Well in this case I don't know an exact angle measure, but they give me an expression to describe it. So I'm going to plug in what I would say is the angle I know, and I'm going to simplify. So we're going to say minus 7x plus 10. We'll notice that I have to distribute this negative. So I'm going to say minus 7x, distribute to the 10 as well, minus 10. So to simplify that, I'm going to say 180 minus 10. So the supplement of 7x plus 10 is 170 minus 7x. Um, I can't solve for x because I don't know this angle's actual measure. But if I added these together, I would get 180. Because I would say 170 minus 7x plus 7x plus 10 would simplify to 180. Let's try two more. So for the complement of E, I'm going to say 90 minus the angle I know. I'm going to plug that expression in and simplify. So distribute the negative, minus 7x minus the negative says plus 12. And then we'll simplify that. We'll combine like terms. So I'm going to say 90 and plus 12 can go together. And our complement of angle E is 102 minus 7x. Okay, last one, we say supplement of angle F. We're going to say what added to 116.5 will give us 180. So 180 minus the angle I know is going to give us 63 and a half or 63.5 degrees. All right, this one's just a little tougher. It says an angle, an angle we don't know, is 10 degrees more than three times the measure of its complement. So let's try and sort some of that out. We have an angle that we don't know. So when we have something we don't know, we call it x. And we have another angle, its complement, we're going to find by saying 90 minus x. So I just named these angles a and b. So we're going to let a, the first one that we don't know, equal x. So then our second angle, its complement, we'll find by saying 90 minus x. So we're going to use the rest of the information they gave us to solve. Um, it says that an angle is, means equal, 10 more, means we're going to add 10, than 3 times the measure of its complement. So plus 10, 3 times, means we're going to multiply, and we called its complement 90 minus x. So once we come up with this equation, we use geometry to do that, and now all we do is solve. So I'm going to distribute my 3. Then I'm going to simplify by combining like terms, so the 270 and the 10. Now I'm trying to get x by itself, but I have x's on both sides. Since the 3x is negative, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. 
and then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and we're going to get x is 70. So the question said, find the measure of the complement. Well, the complement was 90 minus x, so if x is 70, I plug in x, and the measure of the complement is 20. The last type of angle pair we're going to learn about today are called vertical angles. You'll see vertical angles for the rest of this um, course. Um, so vertical angles we could describe in two ways. Um, they exist between two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So the way that I see this, anytime you have two lines that cross, so we have two sets of opposite rays, um, anytime two lines cross, the vertical angles are the non-adjacent sets of angles. So remember, adjacent meant next to, so like one is next to two. So we want the ones that are not next to each other. So one and three are considered vertical angles, and two and four are considered vertical angles. In the future, we'll learn stuff about their measures, but um, remember that their measures are equal. Okay? So in this one, we're going to name two pairs of vertical angles. So if I started with this angle here, I'm going to call it angle HML. Remember, I can't call it M because there's more than one angle attached to M. So HML, its vertical angle is the one not sharing any sides with it, JMK. And the other one would be the top and bottom, HMJ. The non-adjacent would be LMK. Okay, here's one more. Um, another pair we could say EDG, if I chose this side, and FDH. These two are non-adjacent. If you look at the picture, it looks as though those measures are equal. And we could guess that they're both approximately 45 degrees. Now I'm going to give you guys a quiz and allow you to practice this. Um, so if you want to pause the video so that you can try these questions, and then I will show them in a second. So I hope those worked for you. Here's one more. We'll work on some examples like this in class. Have a nice evening.